Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's review session having to do with the Constitution and Government essay for your exam, specifically related to the Virginia plan, the New Jersey plan, and the Great Compromise. Uh, we are going to begin today with a review of all of these. Let's go full screen here. And first of all, let's go over the prompt that is the basis of the essay that you need to write for your exam. Uh, compare and contrast the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan. Who favored each plan? What was each plan about? How was the issue of representation in the legislative branch of government finally resolved? What was that resolution called? How did the compromise lead to the three branches of government we currently have? And what is your opinion of this resolution? I can help you with every part of that except your opinion. That you have to develop on your own. And although there's a lot here in this question, I'm going to help you break it down step by step so that it becomes more manageable and that you can be successful in writing a good response. So let's start with the first part of the question, and that would be the first paragraph of your answer, which will have to do with the Virginia plan. Uh, first thing you need to know about the Virginia plan is it was proposed by James Madison, uh, who was also known as the father of the Constitution. He came to the Constitutional Convention with a great many ideas. He's the guy who took the notes at the convention that tells us what happened there. And since he was from Virginia, which was a large state, he wanted to come up with a plan that favored his home state. That only makes sense. Uh, so the Virginia plan is also known as the big state plan. Uh, it proposed a two house legislature. That's also known as a bicameral legislature. That's a big fancy word meaning two houses. And he wanted that legislature to be based on a state's population. So in other words, if your state has more people, if your state has more citizens, then you should have more power in the legislative branch of government and should therefore have more representatives than states that have smaller populations. Uh, James Madison also believed that we needed an executive and he wanted that executive to be powerful um, so that they could uh, make decisions and not have to consult with lots of other people. Um, so they proposed a one person executive and the Virginia plan also proposed a court system. The one thing the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan have in common is that they both proposed a national court system, which we did not have under the Articles of Confederation. If states had a beef with each other, there was absolutely no way to resolve it under the Articles of Confederation. So the national court system is one thing that pretty much everybody agreed on. Moving on to the New, Jer New Jersey plan, uh, it was proposed by William Patterson, who is less well known except for the fact that there's a town in New Jersey called Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, this is known as the small state plan. New Jersey at the time was a small state. Uh, these days, it's more of a medium-sized state in terms of its congressional representation. Uh, and it proposed a one-house legislature, similar to the Articles of Confederation. It wanted a one-house legislature that was based on each state being equal. So in other words, however many representatives they agreed upon, each state would get the exact same number, um, which is very similar to the Articles of Confederation. Uh, they also did not trust one person to be in charge of an executive, so they wanted a three-person uh, executive branch because they didn't trust one person. Uh, how that would have worked practically, we do not know because, as you probably know, this did not become part of the Constitution. And the one similarity um, was that the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan both wanted uh, a uh, court system, a federal court system, which did not exist under the Articles of Confederation. So in the end, how did the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan become part of the Constitution? Who won out? What compromises were made? We call that the Great Compromise. And this will be the third paragraph of your essay. Uh, the Great Compromise is also known as the Sherman Compromise, or the Connecticut Compromise because it was proposed by Roger Sherman of Connecticut. So if you hear the phrase Great Compromise, Sherman Compromise, or Connecticut Compromise, all of those are referring to the same thing. Um, in the end, there was a bicameral legislature created, uh, made up of two houses. Um, 
We can call one of them the House of Representatives, and we call the other one the Senate. The House of Representatives and the Senate combined, we call Congress. So the House of Representatives was much more similar to the Virginia plan because it was based on a state's population. So the more people a state has, the more representatives that state has in Congress. Whereas the Senate is similar to the New Jersey plan because every state gets two senators, whether that state is small like Rhode Island or gigantic like California. Rhode Island and California both get two senators. Um, so depending on your point of view, one part of this is more fair than the other. But this compromise was brilliant in that it allowed the Constitutional Com uh, Convention to continue because if this compromise was not made, the Constitutional Convention might have ended in failure and we very well could have ended up with a split between North and South. Speaking of that split between North and South, because the House of Representatives was going to be based on a state's population, the issue of how slaves would be counted had to be addressed, and it was decided um, that because the northern states did not want slaves to count at all because they were not treated like people or citizens, and the southern states wanted slaves to count like anybody else even though they weren't tra treated like uh, people or citizens, they compromised very awkwardly and said that slaves would count as three-fifths of a person, or another way to look at that, three out of every five slaves would be counted. I don't enjoy telling you that, but it is written in the Constitution, so you're going to find out about it eventually. You might as well know it's there. That was eliminated by the 13th and 14th Amendments to the Constitution after the Civil War, but for about 90 years, that was in force and part of our Constitution. And finally, because there was no disagreement on this issue, um, there was a... Uh, court system created. We call it the Supreme Court, and there are also lower federal courts, and we kind of have a one and a half executive system. The president is pretty much the executive, but they also created a vice president who would take over in case the president died, was killed, resigned, or was impeached and removed from office. So they did create the vice president, but the only real power the vice president has is presiding over the Senate to break ties in case there's a tie in the Senate. And um, if the president decides to give the vice president extra powers or responsibilities, uh, then that can also be the case. Um, the fourth paragraph of this essay, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to write yourself because I want you to decide for yourself, what do you think of the Great Compromise? Was it a good compromise? Are there any reasons why... Maybe it wasn't a good compromise. Give that a little bit of thought. Write about that a little bit in paragraph four. Uh, and you should be all right. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to wrap up this review session having to do with the Virginia plan, the New Jersey plan, and the Great Compromise. This is Mr. Blumendahl, Waldo Middle School Social Studies, signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.